Hello and welcome to another episode of Physics in Bevy. In this video, I'll be going over how to actually include Rapier into your Bevy application and go about spawning objects into the physics world so that you can interact with them and use the physics in your world. This video is probably gonna be focused on things that you may not immediately consider to do, such as including optimizations and other cargo features that allow you to make sure that your physics plugin runs smoothly. Because Bevy Rapier is so heavyweight, if you don't enable some optimization to begin with, very quickly the physics engine can result in the entire application bogging down and basically running at only a few FPS. Again, I'd like to thank Manuel for sponsoring this series on Bevy Rapier and for supporting the channel over on Patreon. If you'd like to also support the channel, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below. So the first thing you need to do in order to use Bevy Rapier in your application is decide which you are going to use, 2D or 3D, and then include that in your cargo tomal. Bevy Rapier doesn't really make much of a distinction between 2D and 3D, except that some of the components change the types that they use in their declaration, if you're using the 2D or the 3D version. You can learn more about this in my first video of the series, or the components companion video for that, that goes into detail about which components specifically change with the 2D and 3D version. Once you've included a version of Bevy Rapier into your application, you can also enable some additional features. These features include 2D and 3D rendering, which can be simplified to just debug rendering and based on whether you're importing Bevy Rapier 2D or 3D, the correct Bevy Rapier version will be selected. SIMD Stable and SIMD Nightly, which will enable SIMD, which stands for Single Instruction multiple data operations. The difference between the stable and the nightly is that the stable ha doesn't have very good cross compatibility, but doesn't require a nightly build of Rust, whereas the nightly version does, but has better cross compatibility since it has access to more newer Rust features that may not yet be in the released stable version. Parallel, which allows Bevy Rapier to parallelize the running of the physics engine in the background. Sir Deserialize, which enables you to serialize and deserialize parts of your physics world to disk so that you can say save the world and load it back later while maintaining its physics state. Enhanced Determinism allows for certain things to be basically locked out so that it is more reliable cross-platform that the same physics result will happen. Most platforms this is fine since they all should use the IEEE standard for floating point, but there are some situations where there are additional features that are required in order to make sure that the determinism is upheld to. It may, for example, do less optimization in order to use standardized instructions rather than silicon specific instructions. And then there's finally WASM bind gen, which enables Bevy Rapier to be compiled to WASM using the WASM bind gen crate. Next, let's move on to those optimizations I talked about. With most Bevy applications, you almost always want to put profile.dev.package.wildcard and then opt level equals three. This will mean that all your dependencies are optimized to level three, even in development mode. This is incredibly important for Bevy since if you don't do this, large numbers of meshes will slow down the application. But Bevy Rapier also needs this since it itself does lots of calculations based on the number of physics objects in the world. I personally haven't um, experienced any benchmarking in regards to like what limits Bevy Rapier has, but a lot of people in the Discord have been discussing things like about 50 colliders is when Bevy Rapier starts to drop below um, 60 FPS and is taking longer than an entire frame in order to do the physics calculation. But with Opt Level 3 enabled, you can get to like thousands of colliders without anything slowing down. Bevy Rapier also suggests on their website that the you should include profile.release cargo gen units equals one. This will mean that when the compiler runs on your code, it will compile everything as a single standard unit rather than breaking it into multiple units and compiling them separately to then merge into a single unit at the end. This allows for more optimizations to be done at the cost of a slower compile time since it can no longer run in parallel. And that lack of parallelization allows for um, more integration, but obviously slower execution times. Another reason to use op level three when using Bevy Rapier is for the debug rendering this is incredibly slow without the op level three optimization. This world here would run at about uh, one frame every four seconds or something without the optimization turned on. But with the optimization turned on, it runs at about 30 FPS and can be significantly larger before the frame rate drops down. But the main reason for this is because all the gizmo loading all these lines is you know, rather slow in non-optimized form. But once it's optimized, the 
speed is incredibly increased. It's very similar to how Bevy gets quite slow when you have lots of meshes in a world. Unless you're in optimization mode three, then it goes back to being almost unnoticeably fast because there's a lot of checks that go in place, like uh, not subtracting below zero in that, that don't get applied in optimization level three that significantly speed up the rendering of things like lines and meshes. Once you have your cargo set up and actually want to include Bevy Rapier into your application, the first thing you need to do is import the prelude like you would with Bevy. This is really important because Bevy Rapier has a huge number of components that are just sort of generally used all over the place when you're using physics interactions. So including the prelude makes it much simpler than having to know exactly what components you want to include. Once you've done this, you can include in your application the Bevy Rapier physics plugin this takes in a generic type that indicates what are called additional hooks. These are parts of the physics engine that you yourself have implemented on top of the physics plugin provided by Rapier. This allows for certain things like particular types of colliders to interact in certain ways. I believe this is where you would implement soft bodies if you wanted to use your own personal soft body implementation, since I don't believe Bevy Rapier includes a soft body implementation. There is a type in the prelude called no user data, but this just aliases to the unit type, since this just implies that you are not setting any data. Because of this phantom data is needed, so you need to call default on the plugin. You can also include the Rapier debug rendering plugin. This will cause all that rendering of orange lines for colliders, white lines for forces applied to objects, and other things. I tend to put this behind a configuration of debug assertion so that when I release my game, it doesn't have the debug rendering enabled. You can also change the debug rendering mode that you see here I have all enabled, which is the default implementation, but you can also set it to only show colliders, only show AABB colliders, only show uh, collisions, only show all that kind of stuff, and really like customize what you actually want to render. Originally, I was disabling the colliders themselves and only showing the ABB bounding boxes because the colliders themselves were rendering really slow until I turned on optimization level three, which sped things back up. Finally, moving on to spawning the entities themselves. If you want to actually spawn the entities in the world, you spawn them like you would spawn any other entity. The only key difference is you need to either include a rigid body or a collider in order for them to be picked up and registered into the physics world. If you specify a collider and no rigid body, it will be assumed that the rigid body type is static since any other type would be an assumption. Since it is possible to have a collider in the world without having to any need to move it, so static would be a reasonable assumption. If you want to have some kind of interaction with the physics body beyond it just being a static collider, you need to include a rigid body on it. Dynamic will mean that the physics engine completely controls it, Static means that it is just there as a read-only object that things can collide with, and the two forms of kinematic allow for you, the programmer, to move the object around using forces or it's moving its position, and then the correct forces would be calculated. Then you can just simply include the other types of components, such as like locking the axes in the rotation and restitution and friction which I have set in these examples. A full list of all the components available in Bevy Rapier is listed in my previous video called Bevy Rapier Component. The next video on the series will be on ray casting. Ray casting is an important part of a physics engine that allows you to determine from the, say, the player's position or some kind of collider, what it may collide with in a certain distance. This will go into details about how to cast rays, how to interpret the data that casted rays have, and other things such as like casting shapes, which is a more generic form. So instead of firing like a ray along the top and a ray along the bottom of an object to determine if that object would collide, you can cast a shape, and that will check in more detail whether the object would actually collide with anything. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I've started up a Discord, so you'll find a link to that in the description if you would like to come and join the Discord and discuss anything uh, with me or just have a chat or show off your creations to my community specifically rather than the larger Bevy community as a whole. I'm looking into enabling YouTube membership because I have reached the point where YouTube will allow me monetized. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do that yet since I don't know what um, special features I would be offering to incentivize people to become channel members versus uh, like just a member to support the channel. Like I don't know what incentives I would get back. I'd like to do a shout out to all my Patreons that help support this channel. If you'd like to become a patron, you can find a link down to the description and I'll see you in the next one.